Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer um, in St Michael's Chapel on this very wonderful spring day. Well, it's been pretty spring day uh, all day. When you think of some of the weather we've had in the last week, it's been wonderful. And somehow the spring weather and the grass growing and the flowers blooming, it just preaches resurrection. And for this wonderful period uh, over the next few weeks, we're celebrating Easter, we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and looking forward to our resurrection. And tonight is no exception. But we begin with a hymn, and um, find my sheet. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. I'll share the words on the screen in case you haven't got access to the book, or for those people that are tuning in later. Uh, it is in um, Songs of Fellowship 51, or Hymns Old and New, Number 69. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with if you're using um, the main volume. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Lead your people to freedom, O oh God, and banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. But first, we come to confess. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The day is almost over and the evening has come. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your Spirit come down upon us to set us free to sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. Now the psalm appointed for this evening is uh, Psalm 81. The first ten verses thereof. Um, if you have the Common Worship Daily Prayer, which is usually the red one, it's on page 769 in the back of the book. Page 769. Um, I'm not quite sure what page it's on in the regular Common Worship volume, but I'm sure you can find it towards the back. Psalm 81. If you have the book, please say the first ten verses with me and then we'll say the Gloria together. Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take up the song and sound of the timbrel, the tuneful lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, as at the full moon upon our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. The charge he laid on the people of Joseph when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I eased their shoulder from the burden, their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There should be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I shall fill it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. It's on page 67 in the Old Testament part of the Good News Bible, if you wish to follow it. Page 67. And it's the story of the first, first Passover, Exodus chapter 12. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Give these instructions to the whole community of Israel. On the tenth day of this month, each man must choose either a lamb or a young goat for his household. If his family is too small to eat a whole animal, he and his next door neighbour may share an animal in proportion to the number of people and the amount that each person can eat. You may choose either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a one-year-old male without any defects. Then, on the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, the whole community of Israel will kill the animal. The people are to take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and above the doors of the houses in which the animals are to be eaten. That night the meat is to be roasted and eaten with bitter herbs and with bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled, but eat it roasted whole, including the head, the legs and the internal organs. You must not leave any of it until morning. If any is left over, it must be burnt. You are to eat it quickly for you are to be dressed for travel with your sandals on your feet and your stick in your hand. This is the Passover festival to honour me, the Lord. On that night I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. You must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. 
celebrated for all time to come. The Lord said, For seven days you must not eat any bread made with yeast. Eat only unleavened bread. On the first day you are to get rid of all the yeast in your houses, for if anyone during those seven days eats bread made with yeast, he shall no longer be considered one of my people. On the first day, and again on the seventh day, you are to meet for worship. No work is to be done on those days, but you may prepare food. Keep this festival, because it was on this day that I brought your tribes out of Egypt. For all time to come, you must celebrate this day as a festival. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sing I believe in Jesus which is on the sheet I'll just share the words with you um, we can use this not only as a song between the readings but also as our um, as our creed our statement of faith New Testament reading is from Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 5. And I'm just reading a couple of verses. Um, the second half of verse 6 to verse 8. It's on page 209 in the Good News Bible New Testament. 1 Corinthians 5, 6b to 8. You know the saying... A little bit of yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise. You must remove the old yeast of sin so that you will be entirely pure. Then you will be like a new batch of dough without any yeast, as indeed I know you actually are. For our Passover festival is ready now that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate our Passover then 
not with the bread having the old yeast of sin and wickedness, but with the bread that has no yeast, the bread of purity and truth. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, bottom of page 13, there's a responsory to what we've just heard in the Bible. Let's um, say the bits together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is the strength of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And over the page, let's say the Magnificat together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now, over on page 16, let's pray together. I'm going to start with um, King Charles. Those of you that have been following the book, we're just at the start of week two, day eight, a servant king. Jesus said, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Following in his mother's footsteps, King Charles' leadership is rooted in a desire and a commitment to serve, following the ways of Christ in joy-filled servant-heartedness. As we prepare to witness the grandeur of the coronation, we pray for King Charles as, amid all the ceremony, he vows to serve his people as a servant of God. May he have the grace to lead in humility with all his heart, mind, soul and strength. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Charles, our King and Governor, that he, knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all his subjects, duly considering whose authority he hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey him in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue to pray for the church this week, the Church of England in Sheffield Diocese, and the church in Tanzania, Korea, West Africa, Seychelles and Central Africa. In our own Diocese of Chelmsford we pray for the Deanery of Redbridge, the Right Reverend Lynn Cunnings, Bishop of Barking, and the Right Reverend Gouli Francis de Huali, the Bishop of Chelmsford. And in our own parish of Pitsy with Neverland, and we pray for church wardens, church council members, and deanery synod representatives who were elected at our annual parochial church meeting today. Lord, fill them with your joy and with your grace as they all work together to seek to proclaim the good news of your love in this area of pity with Nevendon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray 
about our parish, that we would work together in both churches to serve you, and that the old divisions of them and us and different situations in the buildings would be removed, and that we would simply concentrate on working together to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals, particularly um, the list of people on our prayer list. Pray especially for Margaret Groom and Sharon Anstead, who are either still in hospital or just been discharged. Similarly for Pauline Larocque, who was in hospital last week, but has been discharged. Um, but we pray for all the names on that list and any others we may wish to add to it who need God's special touch today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the bereaved, especially the war victims of Ukraine. And the funerals I've got coming up this week, um, the, the tragedy of uh, triplet babies, Zara, Ziri and Zikora, who are being buried at St Peter's this week. Be with their parents. Help them amidst total despair to find comfort and hope in your word. We also pray for Edna Embleton and her funeral this week and she was a part of the Poplar House community. So we pray for Winnie and all the others who knew her um, in, that, um, in that house, that residential place. And thank you Lord that Edna came to the services that we did on a Thursday evening and was always willing to join in to sing and to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the colleagues of this week, Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And in the middle of the page opposite, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. going to sing again. I'm just going to find the words. This is Open Our Eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Just moving down the script. Here we go. Here we are, it's the one on the left hand side. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. Um, and I know I mentioned this the other week when it came up in the, the Gospel reading, when some Greeks came to see Jesus and they spoke to the Apostles and they said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. And there was a little plaque on the pulpit in 
Oak Hill College Chapel and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. As a reminder to everyone who preached that we want to see Jesus, we want to see him in all that we do. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen, oh, open our eyes, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus is described in Paul's letter to the Corinthians as the Passover lamb. And of course, it's significant that all of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus happened over the Passover festival. Because instead of a lamb or a young goat being killed to ward off the angel of death, for the blood to be painted on the lintel and the doorposts so that God would pass over um, as he did in the land of Egypt. It was Jesus, the perfect innocent man, who gave his life for the whole world. He poured out his lifeblood on the cross so that we could be forgiven and he has risen from the dead to give us the gift of life. But we have to get rid of the sin, the sin that weighs so heavily on us, the sin for which Christ died. I guess it's very easy to think, oh, we're under God's protection will be protected from sin. In other words, God will stop it getting near us. Well, it doesn't work like that because we're human and only one tiny little sin, like a little bit of yeast, can take over everything. One rough thought, one cross word, one moment of anger, one moment of cursing when we should be praying to the Lord. It's just a small little thing, but whatever we do, the devil will get his hooks into us and he'll get in more and more the more we do things that are wrong. So we should be careful about what we do and what we say and what we think. Don't give the devil a chance because one slip up from us and he will try to make us stumble all the time. But the good news is we have a saviour who is stronger than anyone or anything. And we should put our trust in him. Not, as I say, to prevent us from ever getting near the wrong things, but to be with us when we are being tempted. To deliver us through the evil and bring us out unscathed on the other side. There are lots of things in life we have to face. Things which could easily bring us down. 
um, the challenges we face in our workplaces, for example, or the challenges we face in the home. Um, those who are retired still have issues to deal with, whether you're living on your own or whether you're living with other people or with a family or whoever. And it can be very easy uh, with others in a family situation to fall out, to have crosswords, to argue, to do the things that are wrong. And being on your own can lead to um, almost a sort of reliance on self-sufficiency. And before you know it, your mind has wandered off to all sorts of things where it shouldn't be going. So Jesus does not prevent any evil from coming anywhere near us, but he will give us the strength to resist the devil. And not on our own. He will be alongside us. Both Peter and James in their letters say, resist the devil and he will run away from you. In the name of Jesus, we can say to the devil, get behind me. I do not want to see you. But it's only with God's help that we can resist the temptation. Being a Christian is not sort of, you know, a passport to getting through all of the sin and the nastiness. But we have to acknowledge it's there. I mean, you know, we live in a no-blame culture. It's nobody's fault. Nobody does anything wrong. We're all okay, really. Even, as I've mentioned before, the Church of England has tried to leave the word sin out of some of its liturgy in case it upsets people. Well, I mean, of course the, the word sin is going to upset people because it, what's worse is pretending it's not there or it doesn't exist or it's not going to affect us in any way because sin does affect us. And it was our sin that took Jesus to the cross. And on the cross... He was separated from his heavenly father because of the weight and the covering of our sin that he was taking on himself. And of course, being innocent, he died not because he'd done nothing wrong, but he died to take away the wrong that we'd done. So I guess the first step is actually acknowledging that we do do things wrong. And once we've acknowledged that we do things wrong, come to the Lord and say sorry, and Lord, walk beside us and help us not to fall into that trap again. We must not give in to the devil's wiles. We must rely on Jesus to be with us in everything that we do. Now, our last hymn, we have a gospel to proclaim. Uh, it's wonderful that we do, because if we didn't, well, as I've often said, there wouldn't be much point in, uh, in doing anything, really, because it's only because we have this hope in us that we can share it with other people. So, um, this hymn, which... Uh, as you can see from the copyright line, it's not as old as people think, but it covers um, the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, which is wonderful.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. <laughs>